Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this Legs Matter session on living with and surviving a terrible cellulitis infection. Um, so I would like to introduce this video. Um, it's an interview with one of my patients, Rosemary joined by her daughter Lydia and I hope you'll all be really interested to listen to her story of how she has survived and thrived following a terrible episodes of cellulitis. Thank you. So I'd like to welcome uh, Rosemary and her daughter Lydia. So Rosemary if you just give us a wave <laughs> and Lydia so thank you so much for joining us in this conversation about living with cellulitis i suppose it would be a good place to start rosemary if you could just give us a little bit of your history um, and your experience with um, cellulitis please right um i had an accident at work about three years ago um which cause cellulitis in the long term um but i had sepsis at the same time and it was the first time i ever had had that and it was really scary um the cellulitis appeared a couple of days after the sepsis and it was such a shock because these massive blisters suddenly popping out on my leg all over the place and they were awful pus filled weepings um and i was in hospital at that time it took months for it to um, heal over, mostly at home. Eventually it did, but um, it left my leg really, because uh, it was in one leg, really swollen and sore and um, very red with scarring. Um, so it really knocked my confidence a lot. And um, then last year, I accidentally caught the back of my other leg on something really silly, which was a, a carpet at home. And after I'm really, really very careful of the first time and um, cellulitis happened again. And um, very quickly after that, I ended up with sepsis as well in hospital. And it, the legs were so painful and it the cellulitis eventually appeared on the other leg as well, so it's on both legs at that time. But unfortunately, while I was in hospital with sepsis and cellulitis, I got COVID as well. Goodness. So how I'm still here, I do not know. Um, but the cellulitis was a nightmare because it just wouldn't heal when I was in hospital. It, um, we, I had crepe bandages with dressings over the top of it which just slipped out the way they didn't so it was a big issue when i finally came home um having recovered from enough for them to get rid of me out of hospital from the covid and the sepsis um i then had i started coming to accelerate and they um basically sorted out the um cellulitis that was still apparent even then which we're talking about in january considering i first had it probably i would think around november the previous year which was just not healing so it sounds like it was a really terrifying time for you and i think you've said to me in the past that you don't really have a great recollection of the time when you were very very poorly so oh, i wondered man. Lydia, did could you give us a little bit about how that kind of felt as your mum's kind of carer and obviously somebody so close to you, so very poorly, it must have been. Uh, really yeah, it was very scary for me and my family. Um, it was especially over Christmas and there was a period where we didn't speak to her for about seven days where mum, she's always asking like, what you're doing even when she's not at home. Um, so yeah she just she just wasn't wasn't uh, on the planet really um but yeah it was really scary basically thinking that she was going to die um so yeah and up to that point rosemary and lydia had you really considered that the swelling in your legs was potentially something that could kill you no 
No, I seriously didn't. And even when I was in hospital, I didn't think that the cellulitis would basically have killed me, really, mm -hmm. because of, from that I got the sepsis. And by being in there during that particular time, I caught COVID too. But I know sepsis can kill me anyway. Then having COVID on top was quite bad. It was more or less after I came out of hospital and it took months for me to almost be back in my own senses again to be able to think properly and I realised how lucky I was so I thought after that I'm never going to want to get cellulitis or sepsis again. So well and after all of that I can imagine that you would never ever want to repeat that experience again so. No never. Following all of your treatment obviously the swelling is under control your skin's in really good condition and yeah. I think what what another thing that you've definitely made incredible progress with is your weight management. So maybe you could tell us all a little bit about your progress with your with your weight. OK, all my life I've been overweight. Um, and um, so this is the lightest I've been for decades now, <laughs> literally decades. <laughs> That's not it's an exaggeration. So I've lost. Um, about eight stone um, since um, I came home from hospital because of um, when I was in hospital, which was about six weeks. During that time, I ate um, certainly for the first month almost nothing. Um, and I ended up with an acute kidney injury as well from lack of fluid as part of the problem. And um, when I um, came out the decision was that I just absolutely never want to face that again so it had to be weight loss because it's the only way that my um, help with the swelling in my legs as well get rid of that excess fluid and um, so I thought well I haven't got an appetite from having the COVID I didn't really want to eat food particularly nothing to, um, interested me so I thought all right then this is the perfect time to really crack on with the um, healthy eating, change the lifestyle. Absolutely. And that's what and I've done. Perfect. So do you think that from all of the weight that you've lost, have you noticed that that's made an effect on your legs? Do you think there's been any improvement? 100%, 100%. Um, I'm also very um, careful in making sure I do the skin care, I wear the um, compression socks every day. There's no exceptions. I put them on when I get up. I take them off just before having a shower and going to bed, so they're on all day. Um, and that has certainly made a difference. Also, um, apart from the actual conditioning of the legs themselves the and the weight loss, I, I move around far more, and my yeah. mobility has increased so much. She's much more mobile now. Oh, really? Very That's slow, very slow walking before, very slow. Yeah, yeah. When I came out of hospital, and I think possibly because of I'd had I was severe COVID, I had severe COVID, that um, I had to have physiotherapy to help me walk again at home. And um, after a long period of time, I was able to do a bit more and more. And I was determined I was going to. And we go for walks around the block and whatever, mm. slowly, slowly built it up. And now I can walk quite a large amount, <laughs> you know, without um, any support where I used to have um, a stick and stuff. So it has made a big difference. Yeah. That's amazing. So really getting all of your management in place, so your compression, your skin care yeah. has helped you exercise yeah. a little bit more. And then with that yeah. exercise, yeah. you've also been able to keep on top of your weight. So all of those things, it sounds like, have helped you get back to a great sense of kind of normality. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. And if there were people watching this, what do you think would be your advice to them in terms of if say they've had a cellulitis or they've got some swelling in their legs, what do you think would be your nugget, your little bit of information to, to pass on to them? Don't ignore it, deal with it straight away. 
get to your GP um, if it's antibiotics you need, and then also look to your skin care. You've got to cover those cellulitis up because of, for me, I was never given any advice of covering them. It was almost a case of let the air get to them, let them breathe. But in fact, that's the opposite of what you should be doing because of all the infection that can get into them. So just deal with it, get it treated. But if it's weight loss, you've got to do, then you've got to do it if you want to live because of, there was no way I was going to let this um, kill me off. Plus, um, you know, it's, it's unfair to your friends and your family to just let it go. You've got to deal with it when you see it. Did you ever feel that, did you ever feel that you needed to hide your legs and hide the condition and try yes. and just keep on top of things? Yeah, that's exactly what I used to do. <laughs> Wear very, very long skirts, um, not only because it covers the fat legs and the flab, um, it does cover your cellulitis too. But in fact, your skirt flapping against cellulitis is just incredibly painful. It is actually painful just with your own cloth touching your legs. That makes it sore. Did and you the find cold it, air. Did you find it difficult to ask for help? Um, initially, I think when I, um, I think I let it go. To, the first time was such a, I didn't know anything about cellulitis. And it wasn't until I was actually in hospital with sepsis then the cellulitis appeared but for the very first time. But um, I realised it was a condition at all, but it was never dealt with at that time. It was a case of just cover it, give your antibiotics, get you home, and then it will dry out, which it took absolute months. And, and how did, did you find it easy once you kind of knew, well, there's something that has to change with this? Did you find it easy to sort of ask for help or do you, do you have any tips for anybody of where they should look for help or what, what, what would be the process, do you think? Well, first, in the first instance, um, the GP is the first board to call because of antibiotics and things. but. I was never told about Accelerate um, because um, I don't know if people just don't know about it or what, but um, that's been my lifeline because you guys have sorted my legs out, got the um, the bandaging of the legs to um, get rid of this, the actual cellulitis and the compression to get rid of the fluid um, and advice on weight loss and exercise. And that's made all the difference. Without that, I wouldn't be here seriously and how about you lydia from sort of a carer's perspective what do you think would be some support for others who might have a loved one that they're saying like oh your legs look a bit maybe a bit swollen or a bit red do you think there's anything that you would be able to advise those people and how they might be able to support their loved one to make say the right decisions um, same really, don't ignore it. Um, I think there was a stage in December where mum was adamant that she was fine, but me and my sister was like, no, and we found an ambulance and obviously she was not fine. Um, if we didn't call the ambulance and left it a little bit longer, then mum might not be here. So, yeah, because obviously at this time she was very confused and thought that she was fine. She just said she was tired. Um, but yeah, if we left her a bit longer, then, you know, could have been yeah, much worse. And how about when supporting people with like their management, um, so say like their skincare and their compression and their exercise, I suppose they're quite simple things really, but it's that consistency that's key. Yeah. So yeah. do you think it's kind of, do you think that there's any tips that you could give others on how you can really just show up every day and do those things yeah basically you've got to get in the habit of doing it and very soon it will be um the first thing you think of in the morning you just do it and and, and at night because you're in a habit of doing it and it's, it'll be second nature yeah i used to get up and do mum's legs in the morning every day before i went to work that's cool. well, that, 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 yeah she can do it now but i used to do it every day then <laughs> And then with the as well with the weight loss, uh, me and my sister were in charge of her dinners. So 
<laughs> but then we'd, it was a case of <clears throat> I didn't want to be eating anything. I didn't want to. That's the thing. If you if you haven't got your mind set on losing weight, um, you're not going to be able to lose weight, no matter how much your family um, supply you with healthy options. If you're going to cheat, then they cheat. Mm -hmm. But I, I honestly, I just no way wanted to go back to having cellulitis ever again. So it sounds like that that really terrifying experience yes. gave you a bit of a wake up call, and and a mighty shove, you mean? <laughs> and a mighty shove, <laughs> and with that almighty shove you were able to then say okay so i've had some of these thoughts about changing but actually the time is now i can't avoid this any longer i i have to make this change yeah. and that's really sustained you that 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 desire to change and avoid that terrifying experience has been really the thing that's helped you show up every morning wash your legs put on your stockings, do your exercises. And that's yeah. that's such a wonderful, wonderful place to be. Definitely, yeah. And so would you say for others that also might be in this position, if they watch this and they haven't had cellulitis yet, what would be your words of wisdom in terms of daily management and avoiding cellulitis because obviously we want to avoid it it would be better if nobody ever got it in the first place to avoid these very terrifying encounters in the hospital so what would be say like your two or three top tips for people at home to avoid cellulitis Management of weight, obviously, because you don't want that swelling in your legs. Um, you've got to um, look after your skin as well. Um, and um, okay, you elevate your legs if you if you can. But the thing is, you've got to get the exercise, keep the legs going as well. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for sharing um, some of your story, Rosemary. Um, as somebody that's looked after you, you're an incredible inspiration. And I just think that it's so impressive in actually such a short time of healing, really, yeah. you've, you've healed and become more well within, well, less than a year. And actually, yeah. I think it goes to show that with that really consistent management, that actually the journey to wellness is probably a lot shorter than your journey was when you were poorly. So yes. I think it's just so impressive that you were poorly for a good couple of years on and off having this cellulitis, intermittent swelling that just wasn't going away and that you were hiding from. And then within under a year, nine, 10 months, you've transformed your life i believe you're back to work as well oh yes yes yes, to yes. Work. you came to the clinic on public transport whereas before yeah. you would have come in a wheelchair on the ambulance absolutely there's just so many things to be really proud of and i think that anybody that's watching this talk please just seek the advice early on as soon as you notice the problem because there are lots of people out there that want to help um, yes. and if there's if there's anything that you have questions about there are lots and lots of resources on the legs matter website um, that you can refer to some about exercise some about skincare and absolutely the compression garments all right, so thank you so much, Rosemary and Lydia. It's been really great talking to you. Thanks so You're much welcome. for your time. Yeah, bye. 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 Well, I hope that everybody enjoyed watching that video with Rosemary. I'm, I'm just so proud that she's gotten to such a wonderful place in her life and, and the support of her family as well was incredibly valuable. I'm just going to have a look and see if there was anything 
that anyone had put in their questions. Um, what would she tell her younger self if she's lost eight stone? To be honest with you, I mean, it's just such a, it's such a, an incredible situation to be in, isn't it? That actually we think that we've maybe gotten to a point in our life where things will never get back to a point where we can have that same happiness, whether that's around your mobility or your working life or seeing friends and family or experiencing the world. And it just goes to show you that that real consistency and that determination to never be in that terrifying situation again, um, it's just so incredible. So I hope that she would tell her younger self how proud, how proud she is. Um, and then we've got another one saying, my takeaway is that her time to get well was shorter than her years of illness and poor mobility. Absolutely. Um, so it was the number of years that she was sort of, like she said herself, hiding behind long skirts and sort of trying to get on with things, which I think is something that we all do. Um, but really within, within that year of um, being no to the GP, being known to the hospital, community services, and then obviously the lymphedema service at Accelerate. It, it was really all within about a year. So just goes to show that with all of this incredible, simple really tools to manage swelling, what where, where you can really get to. And I really can't believe eight stone is just incredible and just shows such determination. Um, Got another question here. As a clinician, what have you learned? It's a <laughs> it's a difficult one because I think there's so much that you can take from this situation. And I suppose I can apply it to lots of different patient scenarios as well. But I would say one of the main things that I've learned from Rosemary's situation was not to ever ever dismiss somebody's ability to change a really troubling situation. So when we first saw Rosemary, I, re I remember receiving the pictures from the community nurses who were understandably very, very concerned. The cellulitis was quite high up in the leg, very misshapen. Rosemary was clearly very unwell. Um, and I remember as a clinician receiving these and thinking, oh my goodness, where will we be able to go with this lady? And Rosemary showed up every day for her appointments, even though it was difficult because there was pain, you know, bandaging's not the easiest journey. Um, can be tight, you know, initially you can get some pain, particularly if you've got these wounds or deep erosions, but she came every single day and she was so consistent with her exercises. She said, I really want to get some of my shoes on. Um, and so I guess it's just never dismissing anybody, really listening to what their goals are, really hearing where they want to go um, and never, and never accept and never just saying, no, um, no, we can't get there. So that's what I'd say I've learned. Um, got another question. Um, did she have any podiatry support? And is this important? So I don't believe that Rosemary had specific um, podiatry support. However, she did have some um, guidance on, ad um, on addressing footwear because one of the problems that she was finding was that to do any kind of walking around was almost impossible with the large overhang that she had around the, the back of the foot. So finding some shoes that had support at the back of the foot and enough room to accommodate bandaging and, and initially the swelling um, was really important for her. And um, so it wasn't any specific podiatry support, but we have got a leaflet available for patients which talks about selecting the right footwear. Um, and we certainly do use different types of shoes or sort of lymphedema shoes to support people when they're going through their bandaging um, and initially when they have that 
swelling so I would say overall yes absolutely it's vitally important if you want to pe- get people up and moving they need to have some support on their feet um got another question did you use a standard bandage approach or did you have to be creative so I'm just trying to remember Rosemary's legs when she initially came in and I would say that I suppose it depends on what you mean by a standard bandage approach because I would say in the lymphedema world from a maybe wound care perspective some of the bandaging probably does look quite creative anyway so I would say a lymphedema bandage the standard lymphedema bandage I wouldn't say is necessarily creative but maybe looks that way to somebody who's maybe not seen such large legs so I don't believe we had to use any really creative techniques but the amount of compression is high you're dealing with legs that potentially have a circumference of sort of 60 70 80 centimeters at the ankle so a standard bandage of 40 millimeters of mercury really really wouldn't really wouldn't cut it so all I would say is that with the bandaging it's just not being scared of that bandage as long as you've you've discussed your approach with your patient and 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 it's safe to do so dosing your compression to actually get the result that that patient needs you you don't need to be scared of that we can use high levels of compression and get incredible results um but yeah just really important to make sure that you keep um your patient praised of that as well because it could be you know (laughs) a little worrying if they have had bandaging before and then they're seeing you do something that doesn't maybe make sense or doesn't fit with their previous understanding um so i hope i hope that that answered your question i haven't got any more that have come in um but if there's anything that you would like to talk about, or maybe you would like to talk about the differences between sort of lymphedema bandaging or standard bandaging or anything like that, or even more questions about cellulitis, then please do have a look through the Legs Matter website. There's some fantastic resources there, some wonderful talks this week. Um, and thank you so much for tuning in and listening. Thank you.